Hello, beautiful homemakers. In Secrets of Fascinating Womanhood, Chapter 12, we learned how to ask our husband for what we want. I hadn't yet read this particular book, but I had been studying Titus too, and thought I would share with you this story that took place a few years ago. I had always wanted to take a course from someone whose style I admired about how to find my own clothing style, what to look for when buying clothes, beauty secrets, etc. I had taken a fashion class in college, but it wasn't very good, and I did not respect the teacher. Also, while in college, Color Me Beautiful was popular, and I was able to determine my best colors, and I took a makeup class. I won the best shaped eyebrow knot in that class. I felt I dressed well when I was working many years ago, but I also made a ton of mistakes, and like most people, I have bought dozens of outfits only to soon realize that they didn't look great on me after all. I feel like I have wasted thousands of dollars on clothes that I ended up disliking. I also had many outfits that I loved, but I outgrew them after having a baby. Since the first 12 years of our marriage were committed to getting out of debt, including house debt, I only shopped at thrift stores or with gift certificates. Some items were great at the thrift stores and I found some wonderful pieces. But it was also frustrating because I'd find clothes I liked but they were rarely in my size. You know how thrifting is more miss than hit. Well, knowing that I'm not getting any younger, I mentioned to my husband that I would love to take a styling class so that I could stop wasting money on clothes. It seemed that every time I went out shopping and would love the clothes I found, I would come home, remove the tags, and then, quite soon afterwards, discover the flaws. I needed to wear a strapless bra for that weird cut of those straps. This back is too low cut. This shiny button looks like a beacon on my stomach. This side pocket sticks out. My bra keeps showing on the side of this top. Why is this scooped neck so wide? This bunches on the sides when I move, even though it's in my size. Why? The colors look different in the dressing room, and they didn't look as great once I was at home. I thought of those classes again. But I feared online classes just wouldn't be worth the money, and then I'd be wasting even more money. Several women on YouTube have style classes, and some are very reasonable at $100, and some go up to 2500 and there are many in between. So instead, I decided to research all I wanted to learn myself, using YouTube and the library just like I had done with getting out of debt, nutrition, alternative medicine, sewing, and just about everything else in my life. I began. But several days later, I realized that I was just reinventing the wheel. My research was very time consuming. I had a huge stack of books to read, but I just wanted to watch videos. And some videos were in-depth and eye-opening, but most just wasted my time. Then I thought again about that class I wanted to take and that the woman I wanted to learn it from wanted to be paid for her research and time. So wouldn't it make sense to take this style course from her, whose style I actually admired, and learn the things I have always wanted to know? So I took my want to God in prayer and I told him how selfish I felt in wanting to spend so much money and how I was afraid it would be a waste of his money. Later that day, I was studying the Proverbs 31 woman, and I was reading that she was known to dress well. I also remembered that my husband likes me to dress well. Of course he wants me to look good. I reflected that the tightest two women in my life had always dressed very well. They considered it a reflection of their husband's ability to provide well for them. And I don't mean by wearing brand names and logos. They just knew 
how to dress well. I had always tried to emulate them, but again, my efforts were hit or miss. So I decided to sign up for the class. Imagine my chagrin when the first lesson was all about visualization and other new age nonsense. I was devastated. I listened with a sinking heart. This was not what I had wanted. I was wasting money yet again. Thankfully, from week two on, the class did get better. And if I had been in my 20s, the class would have been worth every dime. But unfortunately, I really did know most of the course already, just from life experience and trial and error. I was a bit disappointed. However, I did get focused and was able to clean out my closet and evaluate my clothing with new objectives. But then, only halfway through this course, the stylist came out with a new course, which was actually covering what I thought the first course was going to cover. I was almost in tears, feeling that if I had only waited three more weeks, I could have taken the course I really wanted to take. It made me sad because how could I possibly spend even more money on a course? Would I be just as disappointed in the second course as I was in the first? After all, fool me once and that's on you. Fool me twice, that's on me. I felt like an idiot. Worse yet, I had only one week to decide. I knew that this was just a sales tactic, and I knew that I shouldn't fall for it. I knew I should walk away. But I didn't want to. The course I really wanted was open for one week only. It wouldn't come around again for another year or more. I had already waited three years to take the first course, thinking it was too expensive and hoping it would go on sale, but I had only watched the price double. The price of this course would also go up the next time it was offered, and I knew they meant it now. I was bummed. I determined I wouldn't take it. I went to bed and slept with peaceful resolve. I would do it on my own. But the next morning, the mental struggle was back. I had been disappointed with the first week of the first course, but the other weeks were relevant and helpful, not great, and probably not even worth the money I'd spent. But overall, if I actually applied what I had learned, it was good. It just hadn't been what I was expecting. The back and forth reasoning bothered me all morning long. So I finally took it to God, poured out my heart and my want, for it definitely was not a need. My fear of it being a waste of his money, my chagrin about that first class in the first course, my acknowledgement of how hard my darling husband works to provide. And here I was, wanting to spend more money on an item that wasn't even tangible. Upon arising from my prayer, I realized that I should do what I had been studying about in Titus 2. I should take my request to my earthly provider, my husband. Now, for the past 19 years, I have rarely consulted with my husband about what I buy. He knows I am frugal. He knows I will not spend more than we have. He knows I don't do credit card debt anymore. So I've always felt free to buy whatever I wanted because my wants have always been reasonable. This was different. This was unreasonable. She was 
charging too much. But that was her price. I decided to let my husband decide. The previous day I had mentioned the course to him, told him that I'd like to take it but felt it cost too much and was afraid it wouldn't be worth the money. I slowly walked up the stairs to his office, and he was surprised because I never interrupt him while he is working, except to bring his lunch. So he asked with puzzled concern, What do you want? I didn't beat around the bush. I want something expensive. He immediately replied, No, we need to save money. We have a huge expense, remember? We were replacing our 45-year-old heater and air conditioner. So I didn't continue. I was a little disappointed, but I didn't pout. That was that. I wasn't going to take the class. He began telling me about something interesting, and we talked for a while. Then he walked me to the door, gave me a kiss, and said, Spend whatever you want. You deserve to be pampered a little. I got a huge smile on my face, but not having read Fascinating Womanhood in quite some time, I did not jump up and down and clap my hands, though that probably would have delighted him. However, since I had asked my dear husband for what I wanted, I no longer felt guilty that I was about to spend a lot of money on myself. He told me I could. I quickly signed up, and thankfully, the second course truly did have the information I was looking for. And I was also able to finish the first course and enjoyed that as well. As I was implementing what I had learned, I was able to see what I did wrong in the past. And I became motivated to tailor all of my clothes that needed it myself. To toss worn out clothes, except for my favorite house dress, and give away clothes that are not becoming on me. Amazingly, the very next day I got a reminder in the mail that I hadn't cashed in our points on our grocery card in over a year. I went online and looked up the credit card rewards program and discovered that I had almost the entire class cost available in rewards dollars that could be applied to our grocery bill statement. So, out of pocket, I only had to come up with $100. Now, some women will think I'm foolish because I asked my darling husband for permission to spend money. I can't remember that I've ever done so before. But I had spent the year studying Titus too, and writing what I had learned about biblical womanhood, and asking my husband for what I wanted just felt like the right thing to do. And I am so glad that I did, because in doing so, my husband became aware that I was taking a class I enjoyed, and that he was able to provide that for me. He saw how I had been altering my clothes, and he even told me to go get fitted for new bras at a specialty bra shop in our city. Then, unexpectedly, he took me on a short road trip to an outlet mall that I didn't even know existed, about 30 minutes from our house, and he let me shop almost to my heart's content. Although he finally did say, Let's go home. We hadn't shopped together in almost 20 years since we were dating. The purpose of my sharing this long story is because asking my husband for what I want is new to me. Living by the tenets of Titus 2 is also all new to me. We have almost finished the book, The Secrets of Fascinating Womanhood. We just have the wrap-up chapter left. I will be continuing to read the eight pamphlets of the original 1922 Fascinating Womanhood. And in addition, I think I will begin to share what I learned about biblical womanhood from Titus 2. Also, 
I'm happy to announce that I got in touch with Lane of Lane's Letters, and I will be reading some of her amazing letters to you all as well. For those of you who do not know her, I will introduce her to you soon. May God bless you as you implement a new way of living, the fascinating way. <laughs>